1750 was an unusual year. The whole country had been suffering from severe flooding due to a series of unnaturally fierce thunderstorms. And as if that wasn't enough, London had been rocked through the spring by a number of earthquakes. Rumours of doomsday had spread like wildfire through the capital, with religious preachers mainly to blame. They attributed the earthquakes to God's displeasure at the levels of sin rampant in the population. They warned that the end was nigh. For one man, they weren't far from the truth. It was an unusually sunny day on the 11th of April 1750, when Jack Slack, the Norfolk butcher, set out for the great amphitheatre on Oxford Street to fight the celebrated champion, Jack Broughton. It had been one week exactly since the world had failed to end as advertised, and a lot of people were in a mood for a celebration. The occasion of the glorious champion of all England, Jack Broughton himself, coming out of retirement to deal with the insolence of the upstart Slack was as good an excuse as any. Both fighters felt aggrieved, and in fairness, with some justification. Slack, who had never before lost a bout, was adjudged to have lost a particularly lucrative fight due to the newly adopted rules created by Broughton. He blamed Broughton personally for ruining boxing, and his own formerly blemishless record. He also blamed him for the loss of the money he sorely needed. So, when Slack saw Broughton at the horse races shortly afterwards, he took the opportunity to tell him so, loudly and aggressively. Initially, Broughton tried to dismiss it, but Slack would not let go, and Broughton lost his temper and whipped Slack across the legs with his riding crop. The two were pulled apart by the bystanders, but neither one forgot what they took as a grievous insult against them. So, when Slack challenged Broughton to settle their differences in the ring, he gladly accepted. After all, he was still champion, and had never been beaten. The doors opened at 9am, and over a thousand people crowded inside, paying half a crown each for the right to stand and watch the entertainment. As the morning went on, a series of sparring exhibitions, fencing matches, and wrestling bouts were put on, and slowly the gallery and private boxers began to fill with the very highest of society. The Prince of Wales and his brother, the Duke of Cumberland, Broughton's patron, were both present, as well as all the leading members of the fancy. At one o'clock precisely, Broughton ran up onto the stage to wild applause. The cheers for Slack, who followed closely behind, were not noticeably quieter. The lines were drawn, and George Taylor, the former champion, took his place as captain of the fight. Broughton was tall, long-limbed, athletic and muscular, and seemed completely at ease on the raised platform. Slack was some four inches shorter, but weighed in at almost exactly the same weight, and a heavy frown gave him a look of anger as he placed his toes on the line. Through his career, Slack had developed a reputation for aggression, and usually charged straight in to overwhelm his opponent. But this time... When Taylor gave the signal, he held his ground. Neither fighter moved as the moment dragged out. Broughton was the first to give in. He fainted high with a left lead, and then as fast as lightning slammed his famous peg to Slack's mark. The stocky man brushed it off, but the fight had begun. They exchanged a few blows to little effect. Then Slack snuck a left through the champion's defence and caught him on the cheek. He countered with a solid body shot, and having learned to respect the challenger, his superior science began to dominate the fight. He caught Slack again and again, and received little back in return, but the years of not fighting had stolen a lot of his power, and his blows had little effect. But quantity has a quality all of its own, and a good opening soon presented itself. Broughton threw a heavy right that caught the side of Slack's head, and he dropped like a stone. The crowd erupted into a frenzy, convinced the fight was over, but Slack was made of sterner stuff than anyone gave him credit for, and he knew he had 30 seconds to come up to scratch before the fight was called against him. The second round started much the same as the first. Cautious sparring, feeling each other out, 
and looking for openings, before Slack threw his famous chopper blow, a rolling backfist strike given downwards onto the face. It landed perfectly across the bridge of the champion's nose, and Broughton reeled backwards, clearly hurt. In a move reminiscent of modern MMA, Broughton closed the distance to grapple, but Slack dodged backwards. A heavy blow swung over Slack's guard and sent him sprawling to the floor for a second time. The crowd cheered once more, but the atmosphere in the ring had changed. The fight was not the walkover Broughton had assumed it would be, and they both knew he was hurt. Worse still, he was cut, and the blood was flowing freely down his face. Slack took as long as he could to come back to the line, and the longer he took, the worse the swelling around Broughton's eyes became. Round three began, and the initiative had changed. Now Slack was on the attack, and Broughton was happy to fall back and defend, but it was a poor choice of tactic for a man who was struggling to see. Slack caught Broughton with a brutal right to the side of the jaw, and he went crashing down to the floor. "'What are you about, Broughton?' bellowed the Duke of Cumberland, who had the princely sum of £10,000 riding on the fight, over £2 million in today's money. "'You can't fight and we'll lose our money!' "'I can't see my man, Your Highness,' replied the champion. "'Only place me before him and I'll gain the day yet!' His seconds did exactly that. They placed his feet on the line and the fight resumed. Not that it was much of a fight anymore. Slack landed blow after blow, seemingly at will, and Broughton's fists swung through the air, not making contact with anything. He was quite blind, and he knew he'd lost. With all his power, Slack hit him mercilessly between the eyes, and he went down again. I'm done, by God, I'm done! It had taken 14 minutes for a man considered immeasurably inferior to bring the mighty champion to his knees. Broughton lost more than the title that day. He lost his reputation as an undefeated fighter. He lost his patron, the Royal Duke. And he lost his heart. Thank you.